the spaghetti squash. If you're on a low carb diet or just really trying to be healthier, the spaghetti squash simulates truly spaghetti. And you can have this cooking while you're cooking so many other things. And this is so easy. You literally are cutting this in half. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then you want to scoop out all of the goo. It smells just like carving pumpkins. It smells like the inside because obviously it's a squash. You can do several of these in the oven at once. because you can use so many of your different sauces. So when I'm doing my food prep, and let's say I'm gonna do a pasta primavera, or perhaps I'm gonna do a pesto, or even if I wanted to do a, a spaghetti and meatball type item. So in my house, with my family, we've got vegans, vegetarians, gluten-free, icy diets, so it just makes sense that I have a multitude of different things. So the ones that are on the low carb diet or the gluten free diet can use the spaghetti squash. So they grab the sauce that I've made and then either the gluten free pasta, the traditional pasta, or the spaghetti squash. And I haven't made 27 different meals. It's all just right there. Whole family's happy. different meal plan needs. Doesn't have to be time consuming for you. If your prep work is all done and all you have to do is throw things in a pot of hot water or pull it out to heat it out when it's time, it doesn't feel overwhelming that you're cooking for four or five different needs. I have a working mom. Easily work 70 hours a week. Doesn't mean that they can't have healthy fresh foods. It just means that I need to prep in advance to make that happen for them. All right, let us make spaghetti squash. I love spaghetti squash because gluten-free diet, no problem. I can have, instead of having to do the gluten-free pasta, this delicious spaghetti squash, sorry, um, I can use this instead of using gluten-free pasta. I can use this for a low-carb diet and it's so simple. I mean, I don't think it could possibly be any simpler. You uh, olive oil the inside. A little garlic. Pink Himalayan salt, any kind of salt you want. I just am a fan. Upside down. You can use a baking pan, you can use a Pyrex dish. Just make sure you've got that parchment paper under there. Again, more olive oil. Garlic. Get my salt. Stick it in the oven. 45 minutes at 400 degrees and you are good to go. Pull it out of the oven and we're gonna scrape it all out and we'll have spaghetti squash. All right, our spaghetti squash has been in the oven for 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Let's take a look and see how it looks. Oh, it's beautiful. Notice the top has become very brown. It's pliable to the touch. Although hot, it is still pliable. We're gonna leave 
this to set and rest for approximately 10 minutes. It'll still be nice and hot, but it'll have finished releasing all of its deliciousness and we'll be ready to scrape it out. And today we're gonna to make a pasta primavera and we're utilizing a lot of different kinds of vegetables. It may be different than the pasta primaveras that you're used to cooking, but that's the beauty of a pasta primavera. There is no right or wrong, it's fresh vegetables. I do already have my water cooking on the stove so that my pasta can be done and ready for me as my primavera is ready because fresh, fresh is what we like to do. What are we gonna be using today in our pasta primavera? Well, I did a little bit of a twist on it because using the harvest vegetables, we're using things like golden beets. And then of course, adding in the peppers, we're gonna use these incredible heirloom tomatoes. I have pre-prepped all of my items to make my cooking go faster. But for those of you that are gonna be making this from scratch, your prep time's gonna take you about 10 to 15 minutes to get all of your vegetables cut. If you're using as many veggies as I do, but if you're a person that just likes, you know, some pepper, some onions, some garlic, that's fast. Chick chock five minutes and you're cooking. Now, because I'm using things like an heirloom beet, I'm also using some fennel, I'm going to go ahead and start with a vegetable stock before I start sauteing things. So I'm gonna just use one cup of veggie stock and I'm gonna bring that up to a boil and I'm going to add one cup of sliced golden beets and I'm going to use a half a cup of sliced fennel again into that vegetable stock. These are harder vegetables and they wouldn't saute up as nicely as all the rest of our vegetables are going to do. So first I'm going to soften them in the vegetable stock and then at that point add the olive oil and the garlic and really get the saute process going. And you can just put it in there and leave it. Until it starts to boil. When most of that liquid has evaporated down is when we're going to start the sauteing process. Now this would traditionally be the best time to grab your bread and start making your garlic bread, getting that all put together and in the oven your water is boiling as you're getting your primavera ready. All right, it is time to make spaghetti out of my squash. So I'm going to take, it is still quite warm, so I'm just using a paper towel to hold the squash itself and see when you draw a fork through it how it makes almost like spaghetti noodles that's just the natural consistency of a spaghetti squash it's why it's called that and it's fantastic and I'm just going to scrape that directly into a bowl again it is quite warm so do be careful Take it all the way out, all the way down to the skin. Again, see that beautiful inside? I'm scraping out my squash. The spaghetti squash keeps beautifully in your refrigerator for about five days. So I can make two or three spaghetti squashes and separate it out and have several different kinds of spaghetti squash at work, at home. It's really easy to reheat it. It, it microwaves beautifully. So we've gotten our golden beets and our fennel, which we started in that beautiful veggie stock. The veggie stock is now completely evaporated and truly absorbed into the veggies. The veggies are a little tender now. And at this point, we're gonna add our garlic. I'm sorry. At this point, we're gonna add our olive oil. About a quarter of a cup. We're gonna take three tablespoons of garlic. garlic 
starting to bubble up in that olive oil. Wait just a moment. We're now going to add a quarter of a cup of diced red onions. And a half a cup of diced tri-colored peppers, which would be your reds, your yellows, and your oranges. I like my pasta primavera to be full of rich, beautiful colors. I like to have all those colors on my plate. That's why I use the tri-colored peppers, why we do the this time the golden beets. These colors are all both complementing each other in looks and in flavor, but it just makes your plate so inviting. So we are cooking this on high. We're only going to cook our vegetables to an al dente, which means of the tooth. It's not going to be a soft, squishy vegetable. Rather, you're going to be able to feel the consistency. They are not hard, they are just cooked to perfection. Which means that your onions are starting to become transparent, your garlic is starting to turn that very light brown. At this point I'm going to put in my heirloom tomatoes. About a cup. Ah, let's go a cup and a half. Why not? Again, I'm using that tri-color. So if you see, they're the beautiful colors of fall. You've got your red, you've got your oranges, you've got those yellows. It's a beautiful autumnal color. Now we're going to cook this part down again just so we have that al dente, which means that your tomatoes are starting to fall apart inside. They're becoming a little softer. in my one tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt. That's going to help the vegetables release some of their liquid. Helps the tomatoes start to dissipate in there. I'm also going to add in one tablespoon of onion salt. Can you hear the juices just bubbling in there? That is primarily the juices from the tomatoes that have released from putting that salt in there. The tomatoes have let go of their uh, liquid. That's starting to create a bit of a sauce as some of the other vegetables are starting to cook down just a little bit. Again, we don't want them to cook down too much. We do not want mush. We are using, instead of parsley, we're going to use carrot tops. Again, I like to add some new things every week to my family's, I like to add something new to my family's uh, recipes so that I increase their ability to taste and accept new things and carrot tops have a nice peppery flavor to them. So I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of the carrot tops just sprinkling over the top because we're almost done with this recipe. Isn't that beautiful? And let's 
let's give that a taste, make sure we're happy with what we've got there. Mmm, that's exceptional. Just the nice, a little bit of crunch, the sweetness from that golden beet, the undertone of that fennel, and then you have the nice garlic, and goodness, you don't even have to add any pepper because the carrot tops have added just that little hint. Really fantastic. Turn off the heat and that is truly done. All you would need to do is take that and spoon that directly over on top of your pasta. Now that is what we are talking about. So all we need would do is just pour that over uh, beautiful pasta and even over your spaghetti squash. Or you can certainly dip right into it with some garlic bread. But I really want you to see the beautiful colors of fall. Good eating.